Now, allegations of bullying against John Burko have rumbled on ever since we first broke the story here on Newsnight. The latest accuser is David Leakey, a former senior parliamentary official who said he and his staff were brutalised by the former Speaker, who shouldn't, in his view, be put into the House of Lords. John Burko, a Conservative, has been nominated for a peerage by Jeremy Corbyn. Mr Burko denies all claims of bullying against him and described Mr Leakey's allegations as rubbish. Today, the Shadow Home Secretary, Diane Abbott, waded in, tweeting, claims he was bullied unlikely. Her reasoning? Mr Leakey was once a Lieutenant General in the British Army. She subsequently deleted the tweet, and the Labour Party issued a statement saying all allegations of bullying and harassment should be taken seriously. But it raises questions about stereotypes and misconceptions about who can and can't be a victim of bullying. Joining me now is Debbie Arnold, actress and patron of the National Bullying Helpline, and Dave Penman, General Secretary of the Civil Servants Union, FDA. And, Dave, if we start with you, what did you make of Diane Abbott's comments? Um, quite extraordinary in terms of her comment around the idea that someone who had served in the armed forces couldn't be bullied. But I think what was more concerning is that for a politician, the, the, the point of the, the tweet was to support Berko and undermine the complaints against him. And she was prepared, essentially, to undermine someone who is making really serious accusations of bullying simply to form an allegiance with a kind of political ally. And that's really a picture we've seen around trying to challenge the bullying and harassment in Parliament. Politics always wins, and that's blocked every attempt to have a kind of independent process where MPs can be held to account for their behaviour. And if we think, Debbie, about bullying more widely, I mean, do we stereotype bullying, do you well, think? Well, of course we do. Bullying victims. We, we, we see victims of bullying as little boys at school or little girls and being kicked. But it goes on. It's much broader. And, of course, men are bullied. Men are bullied a lot. Men are... You know, Prince William says, you know, we're not OK. He's, he's helping everybody with mental health issues. But it's the same sort of thing. You could be Prince William. You could be a little guy down the road. But everybody can be bullied. Every man, every woman. We are people. We are human beings. We are all capable of being bullied. But is there something something particularly about those supposedly male professions, whether oh, it's, I don't know, the I'm army sure. or yeah, sport, yeah, where then particularly people in high up ranks, that there's a perception they can't be bullied. Well, yes, of course, because they're so, so macho, aren't they? And they think that they couldn't possibly be bullied, but I'm sure, of course they can. There are different things that, you know, people can push people's buttons and they know how to do that. And d there are different sorts of bullying that go on as well. And, I mean, the evidence suggests about a third of people in the workplace have experienced bullying? A third. Well, you yeah. tweeted today, it was interesting, you tweeted, faced with an abusive boss, we often advise members to deploy military self-defence tactics. I wonder what you meant that was, by that. That was a sarcastic <laughs> oh, yeah, what did you, mean? you don't mean everyone should be doing karate? Yeah, exactly, or because that, that, that seemed to be part of what Dan Abbott was suggesting. So it was, it was to kind of highlight the ludicrous nature of what she was suggesting. Uh, bullying is an abuse of power. So when people have power in an employment context over another individual, about three quarters of people who talk about bullying in the workplace are talking about their manager and a person in power bullying them rather than a kind of peer or a colleague. Where you get that abuse of power, whether it's uh, at the speaker around, which is a very powerful position in Parliament, whether it's a manager, it doesn't really matter on the gender, it doesn't matter what the person's background is. You have power over an individual and you're abusing that for, you know, whatever reason. But do we sometimes fetishise it, in a sense? We talk about, you know, in, our, in my medium, you talk about the sort of newsroom culture, that the sort of shouting at people and making them feel small is almost fetishised, in a sense, to say, you know, it makes people better at their job. Well, it, it's, it's funny, because I've worked with lots and lots of directors, as an actress, who, yes, I was say, who, who, shout, who, who shout at you and make you feel awful. But I never work well with those people. I only work better, and I'm sure it happens with loads of people. There are people that work better with those people, but I'm not one of those people, and I don't think it helps. You know, the teacher at school that was the most interesting was the one that was the most fascinating, the one that didn't tell you off all the time and make you feel small. And I think that happens in every... It, it, if you empower somebody, they work better. If you bully them, they're afraid of you and I don't think they work as well. Quite often in our experience it's, it's poor management skills. You know, it's people who don't have the skills to kind of motivate and inspire and so instead of that what they're doing, whether it's deliberate or whether it's inadvertent, they are creating an, a, a kind of hostile environment for people and, and about a third
third of people who experience workplace bullying say that they then leave their organisation. So employers have a responsibility here because actually, apart from protecting their workforce, they're also going to lose valuable employees by not having effective mechanisms in place. But is there also a problem that people have uh, different ideas of what actually constitutes bullying? Yeah, well, I suppose they do, but I think, you know, being bullied is when you make someone else feel small, you make them feel afraid. It happens in relationships between men and women, it happens in families, it happens with parents, it happens with children. The National Bullying Helpline, they are the most fantastic organisation because we have, we have calls from, you know, fantastic, you know, barristers, lawyers, people in the government, you know, all sorts of different people, and, and we look after them. And in terms of what's going on in Parliament, which is where exactly. this all began, yeah. in a sense, this story, your, your uh, union, are you are you lobbying for change? Is change going to happen? Yeah, well, I, I mean, we've been lobbying for a long time to have an independent process. One of the problems you have in Parliament is the lack of scrutiny. MPs regulate themselves, so that's where you saw things like the expenses scandal, and you know how this around behaviour. So time and again, people raising complaints, and MPs were not prepared to regulate themselves. So it took a scandal with the assistance of Newsnight and the work that was done about exposing uh, 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 the, the bullying culture that went on to actually create the political environment when change is coming. But they still haven't got an independent process. The, the um, House Commission will meet next week, you know, 15 months after they first took a decision to, to, to introduce an independent process, it still hasn't been introduced. So, so that, that, that's not a victory yet. And, and, and they're, they're regulating themselves, yeah. and which that, is crackers, isn't at it? At the end of the day, it'll have to go back to the House and MPs will have to vote for it. Dave Penman, Debbie Arnold, thank you so thank much you. for coming in.